Google Gemini paper was released a couple of days back. Apart from the fact that they have got so many authors, almost like close to 900 authors on the paper, and also they managed to stack the core contributors starting with J E M I N I so that it sounds like Gemini. They have a lot of interesting details in this paper, and we are going to go over certain very interesting aspects of Google Gemini. First off, this paper still illustrates that why prompt engineering could still be the best way to get the best out of the model. What do I mean by that? So if you see these bar charts, this is on MMLU benchmark and this is also one of the biggest controversies around Gemini when it was released. So you can see that they've compared two models, the GPT-4 and Gemini Ultra model. So one, you can see score evil. The second one is the second method, chain of thought at 32 and chain of thought at 32 with uncertainty routed. And when you see chain of thought at 32 with uncertainty routed, you can see Gemini Ultra completely crushing GPT-4. But on the other hand, chain of thought at 32, GPT-4 is better. And even at score evil, GPT-4 is better. And what is happening here was one of the main reasons of the controversy. And I wanted to just dive a little bit into what is it. First of all, what is the uncertainty routed chain of thought? What Google has done is, Google has created a new method of using prompts and getting their output. The method that they are calling here is that the model, whatever in this case, either GPT-4 or Gemini Ultra will produce K chain of thought samples. So in this case, the K would be 32. So it's going to produce K chain of thought samples and selects the majority vote if the model is confident above a particular threshold. And otherwise it defers to the greedy sample choice. Let us dive deeper into what do they mean by this thing. So first of all, if you see chain of thought and if you're not familiar with chain of thought, so this is the standard way of prompting a large language model. You just simply give a problem and then you say, what is the answer? And then you ask a question and then you ask an answer. This is also called as few shot prompting where you give an example. In this case, one shot prompting, you give one example to the large language model and you told the answer as well and you are expecting it to answer next. The model of course has given a wrong answer according to the chain of thought paper. But when you give this few shot prompt, if you tell the model also how to approach the answer, like you give the chain of thought to the model in itself, the model actually does a good job in answering. And this was the core of the principle of chain of thought. Since then, it has been like one of the default ways people prompt these large language models. So what Google has done, at, at least like according to my understanding, is that Google has tried to create, use this chain of thought in creating like K samples, like K chain of thought samples, and like for example, in this case 32, and that basically decides based on majority voting that which should be the right answer at the end for MMLU questions. So for MMLU questions, 32 chain of thought samples and majority vote has been used to decide if the mo model is confident above the threshold. If the model is confident above the threshold, then use the chain of thought answer. If the model is not uh, confident above a threshold, then use the greedy sample choice, which is basically what when you ask chat GPT or Google bot, you get the default answer. So one is the default answer. The second one is the K chain of thought sample. And then the model has the threshold to decide which one it should go with. And the thresholds according to Google are optimized for the model based on the split performance. So we don't have enough detail. So this is what they're calling as uncertainty routed chain of thought. So I don't know why uncertainty but it is uncertainty routed chain of thought. And they're saying that the intuition behind this approach is that chain of thought samples might degrade the model performance when you compare it with maximum likelihood decision, which is what you do in the greedy sample choice when the model is demonstrably inconsistent. So for example, if you have a model that inconsistent, that gives you inconsistent responses, then chain of thought might actually degrade the performance of the model rather than what you get by default in the greedy sample or the maximum likelihood approach. So that is why Google had this kind of a routing approach where they use a CVOT at 32 plus the greedy sample and then they use this majority voting and then they got the answer. Now again, I don't want to get into the ethical discussion of whether it was right for them to show 90% on the landing page, but 
this is honestly mind-blowingly revealing that all these large language models like all the informations that we know about this large language model it is still not significant enough for us to understand why something is happening the way it is happening and prompt engineering as much as we can make fun of it i think it is quite still relevant in the age of gpt4 in the age of gemini ultra the next thing that i wanted to highlight from this paper is how easily the model can interleave text and also images or, or, or the other modalities. I think this is one thing that I've not seen a lot of models doing. I'm not even sure whether GPT-4 vision can do it. In GPT-4 vision or GPT-4 plus, you can ask a question and it can create an image, but it cannot interleave the image with the text. You can go to Gemini Ultra, which is currently not out yet. You can say, please create a blog post about a trip to New York where a dog and his owners had a lot of fun include a few pictures of the dog post happily at different landmarks. I mean, this is one of the easiest ways to fool your friends when you write a blog or for Instagram. But what you can see here is that this is a model response. The model has given you text, one modality, and the model also has given you the images, which is another modality. It shows how easy it is to get interleaved modalities within Google Gemini Ultra. So if you see this, this is one of the key aspects of Google Gemini Ultra. You can input in text, you can input an audio, you can input an image and video, and the model can actually respond back to you with text and interleaved with images. And they're saying that it can also interleave text, images, audio, video as input, and it can output responses interleaved image and text. That means you can have a prompt where there is text, image and audio clip and that can go inside Google Gemini Ultra and then it can come out as images or text or images and text, which I think still is one of the most underrated factors of Google Gemini Ultra. The next thing that I wanted to highlight in this is how Google Gemini Ultra does a really good job in understanding charts and infographics. So if you go see uh, at the very bottom of the paper, one of the important things that they highlight here is that how good the model is at understanding the charts. So for example, if this was the input image, like this is from Our World in Data, a very popular website where you can find a lot of insights and data for that as well. Spot a data point that stands out in these charts and what that implicates. Then produce a detailed markdown table for all the data shown. So there are multiple things that you are asking this large language model. One, you wanted to find out something that stands out. So the model has to understand what stands out and the model has to understand what that implicates and the model has to provide a markdown based on that. And this is the output. So the model understood what was going on and model gave the final output. So you can see the landfill mismanaged incinerated recycle and it has created this table based on whatever you're seeing and to be really really honest i have seen a lot of items in the past that tries to take data out of a chart like try to take the chart and translate into a tabular format or a structured format because very often this happens in an enterprise setup you have a chart but you want to convert the chart into a tabular format where you want to put it on a google spreadsheet or a tableau and make something changes and that is quite possible with Google Gemini Ultra. I know chat GPT plus with GPT-4 vision can do some part of it. I've not done the exact test, but I'm going to go over every single prompt that I find here on Gemini paper and then go over. And this is something that caught my eye. The next thing that I found really interesting is once again, based on prompt engineering. So Google Gemini Ultra is being asked to write a code. So even though it is going to be asked about code, you can see how the prompt has been built. So it says create a web application called Op Opossum, Opossum Search. And you can see very clear step-by-step -step guide about how the code generation should be. So every time you make a search query, it should redirect you to Google search with the same query, but the word Opossum before it. So every time you make a search, it should redirect you to Google search. So you can see here in the code somewhere that it would actually mention that every time you click something, it redirects to Google search with Opossum in the query. That is perfectly accomplished in the response. It should be visually similar to Google search. So it kind of understands how it looks like Google search. And you can also see when you see the rendered website. So you can understand that. The next 
uh, condition here is that instead of Google logo, it should have a picture of an opossum from the internet. And then finally, it should be a single HTML file. This is something that I do with GPT-4 a lot because we don't want three different files. We'll want like inline JS, inline CSS. And finally, it should say powered by Google search in the footer. And you can very well go see that it would say powered by search in the footer. The footer is ugly. It's not very good. It's not a Google theme. It doesn't do all those things. But I'm also happy to see the way you give prompts will have a huge impact in how you get the output. So overall, I found this Google Gemini paper really interesting and this seems like a really good lesson in prompt engineering, of course, due to a variety of reasons. I would have really appreciated if Google had gone deeper into the details about how they did the 32 samples of chain of thought prompting and what kind of prompts that they used with MMLU benchmarks. That would have been quite interesting to see. But even otherwise, I think this paper is absolutely interesting and uh, I'm glad that Google put it out. I think my only, um, one, only complaint if I have to do, they didn't jump dive into a lot about the training data. Maybe they don't want lawsuits, but you don't see a lot of information about the training data in it itself, except saying that they had multimodal and multilingual data. And it is combination of all these things like web documents, books, code, images, audio and video data. Probably the only information that I found interesting in the training data piece is that they used a sentence piece tokenizer and they found that training the tokenizer on a large sample of entire corpus actually improved the inferred uh, vocabulary. And they also found that Gemini models can efficiently tokenize non-Latin scripts. Like for example, the language I speak at my home, like in my uh, hometown is Tamar, and that's a non-Latin script. And they have found out that Google Gemini models can efficiently tokenize these things without having a separate tokenizer, primarily probably because the, the main tokenizer has seen large amount of data and this can benefit the training and inference. I think this might have some advantage in fine tuning if ever these kind of models come into the fine tuning stage, which I definitely think Google are not going to let us do it. But overall, this was Google Gemini papers. My interesting points. If you found anything very interesting in that, that I did not cover, please let me know in the comment section. But otherwise, I'm planning to do more research on Google Gemini's the appendix and then compare it with GPT-4 Vision. Stay tuned. See you in another video.